thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Well, it's time to install our camshaft, and this time we're going to degree the camshaft. I'll show you what degreeing the camshaft does for you, and how you know you have it installed right, and number one piston that top dead center. Okay, now I have my camshaft lubed, and I just have lube on the bearing surfaces here. I don't have any lube on the lobes of the cam, because I'm using a roller cam and with uh, roller rockers, or I'm sorry, roller lifters, and if you put lube on your on your lobe, there's a chance that the roller on the lifter would skate, so you don't want to put any on there. I also have a couple of long bolts on the front of the cam to help me get it in nice and easy. I have the bearings lube from the inside, so I'll get, we'll probably just get a little bit of lube on the um, cam as I put it in. Now you just got to go gent if you go gently, and you find each one of the centers carefully, you shouldn't have a problem, and I've never had a problem doing this. Now, I also have the machine shop install the cam bearings, because they have the right tool to put it in straight, to put them in straight, and to make sure that uh, they all line up perfect, so I have them do that as well. And, almost there. Okay, so wipe some of this excess off, and there we go. Camshafts install. I can take off my bolts, and now I can put my timing gear on, my timing chain and gear. Now, what you can't see just off to the side here, I have my number one piston at top dead center. I use my dial indicator just to make sure number one's at top dead center, which puts my puts the um, Keyways right in the right spot, and I'm going to go zero to zero timing, which is zero on the dot to dot. So I got dot to dot. Here's the zero, zero of timing. I also have some lube on the back of that thrust face. If I put this on here, slide this on, should line up right, right on that pin. Okay, just like that. Okay. Now I can put my bolts in and we'll start talking about degreeing the cam. Before we get to that, we're going to put our cam button in and our cam lock plate. And Our cam button just goes in the middle just like that. Try and have your holes lined up. And we put our cam lock plate over the button like that. We've got three fasteners. These are put on with some red, red thread locker for these. Just to get them started, I'll get them started. And these get torqued down to 20 foot-pounds. You don't need a ton of thread locker on there, just a little bit, just to hold it in once you get it in place. Okay, I'll run those down. We'll get it to 20 foot-pounds. And 20, 20, and 20. All right, we're all torqued down. Okay, one of the questions I get asked quite often is, do I degree my cams? Should you degree your cams? And the answer is yes, yes I do. Sometimes I don't show it, but I do. And, and since people are asking, I'm gonna degree the cam on this engine. We're gonna use a deg uh, cam degree wheel. We're gonna find true top dead center to make sure we have that. We're gonna find the installed center line angle of the camshaft to make sure that's correct. And compared to the cam card, we're gonna check our uh, duration for the intake and exhaust valve to make sure that it matches the cam. And we'll check total lift also, just to make sure that the cam matches what the cam card says or the way it was ground. So we're kind of verifying what ComCan said they ground this cam to. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the exact top dead center for our pointer here. And I just have a big aluminum piece of wire that's ground to a point there so I can see where it's pointing because I have a small cam wheel here. And I have a dial indicator sitting on number one cylinder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my cylinder. I'm going to bring the piston up until I get to 50 thousandths. And it's just, that's just an arbitrary number. I'm just bringing it up so I know that I bring it up the same way on both sides. So I'm going to turn my engine over until the dial indicator moves and it gets up to 50 thousandths. We got a ways to go here. Should be coming up pretty soon. Okay, there we go. 
Now I'm going to go, go very, very slow because I want to be accurate with this. So I'm just going to kind of bump this, bump this up a little bit. Oops, see, I went too far. If you go too far, you got to back down past the 50 and sneak up on it again. So I'm going to sneak up on this a little bit at a time. Just bump, okay, right there, 50. And this is measuring right here. It says it's at uh, 24. So the first measurement is 24. Now I'm going to go the opposite direction. Go all the way back around and bring it up to 50 again. Should be coming up pretty soon. There we go, it's coming up. Oh, oh how lucky is that? Stop right at 50. And on this side, it's at 11. So the difference between 24 and 11 is 13. Of course it's 13, right? It's got to be an odd number. Cut 13, let's call it 14. Cut it in half, that's 7. Which means I have to add 7 degrees, or I have to move my pointer 7 degrees. So I'll go from 11, I'll, make it, I'll move this up to 18. And it's just a bendable thing, so it takes a little bit to get it set. All right. Now, okay, that's set to 18 right there. Okay, so now I'm at 18. Now I'll go back the other direction, and it should finish at 18. Should be coming up here pretty soon. There we go. And that's just sitting at about 50. And that pointer is right at like 17 and a half. It's like so close. So let me make it 17 and a half. Okay. All right, so there. Now I know that at top dead center, that pointer is pointing right at top dead center. So if I were to go, if I were to continue to go here and stop at top dead center like that, I'm at uh, 50, 53, 54, that way. If I go back this way, go around all the way again, 360 degrees. Of course, my bolt came loose. I sneak up on the, I'm going to put this bolt in tighter. So I'm going to come back around and at zero. Same thing, 50, just about, oops, I got a little bit more, 54. So my pointer is right at exactly top dead center. All right, so why is it important to find absolute top dead center with that pointer by going back and forth like that? Not getting to top dead center, but checking with the piston below top dead center, or TDC top dead center. Because if you imagine uh, the, the piston, as the piston comes up, in the, uh, as the piston is coming up in the cylinder, it's, it's, it's rotating like this, it's rotating, you got, you got the crankshaft, okay, the piston's running like this. As the piston comes to the top of the bore, it's going to stop as the crankshaft transfers, and it's going to transition from going up, it's going to roll over, and it's going to go down. So the piston's going to stop. Now, it could be up to six degrees rotation of the crankshaft. The piston's going to stop, the crankshaft could rotate another six degrees before it stops to go down. That's why we check the top dead center on the way up. We go past it, we, we go up, and then we go back the other way, and we check it that way. That's how we know we got this pointer at the absolute dead center. That's important. Now we can check our center line angle. Okay, now for the installed center line angle, I'm going to assume you guys don't have any expensive gear, expensive calipers. I just have a magnetic base and a dial indicator from Harbor Freight, you know, 30 bucks. And just, just to get it close, and you can get a, a cam wheel, cam degree wheel anywhere. For 10, 20 bucks. So what I have this installed here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the engine in the direction of rotation, and I'm gonna have I have a lifter in here now. A lifter isn't the best thing to use, but that's what I'm gonna use because that's what most people will have. And I'm gonna rotate the engine until the number one intake valve is all the way open. Now, just like the piston, when the lifter gets to the top, there's a little bit of dwell there, so it's gonna go a couple degrees past pass right there so see how it stops and I can still go like a few degrees so I'm going to back up just a little bit 
And let me get it right about there and I'll zero that out. Zero that out. Okay. Now, I'm going to back it up until I get to 50 thousandths. And I'll write down what we got here. Let's see. 50, 60, 1, 2, 3, about 60. It's about, let's call it 64. Okay, now go the other direction, 50 thousandths in the other direction. And this one will be 180, 170, 160, 150, 146. 146. We add those up. So we got um, 64 plus 146 equals 210. And we divide it by 2. Gives 105 degrees center line. 105 degrees. And our cam card says. Uh, Installed center line 106 degrees. So I'm off by one degree, which could be the thickness of the wire and a little bit of a play at the top and bottom. So my installed center line is right on what the cam card says, 105 or 106 degrees. All right, next thing on our cam card, we're just going to check our duration at 50. It says on our cam card here, duration at 50 thousandths of lift is 206 degrees of rotation for the intake valve. Okay. So what I have is my indicator on the intake lifter and it's set at zero so I'm gonna rotate this until the intake lifter or the intake valve opens 50 thousandths and there's 50 and right here I'm at two degrees two degrees there's 180 degrees I'm gonna go back right till it stops again okay now I'm gonna go back to 50 thousandths Almost there. Okay, right there. We got 180, 190, 200, 5, 6, 7, 8. 208 degrees. It says 206. So it's extremely close. It could be ground off just a teeny weeny bit. So we know our duration at 50 is right on the money within a couple degrees. Our intake center line is right. We got our top of that center. Now let's just measure our total lobe lift and we'll be done. Last, we're going to measure our total lobe lift. I've got the indicator set at zero and it's resting on my lifter here. I got a little bit of preload on there, so it's, it's preloaded a little bit at zero. And we'll rotate the crank and see how far our intake valve opens. There's 100, 200, 300, 300, and 319. 319 and the cam card says 320. So we're 1,000 short of lift. And that's just variation. It could be variation manufacturing. Plus, I'm not using the perfect gauge to do this with. So this is uh, uh, it's extremely close. Everything is so close, it's almost perfectly right on. Well, there you go. This goes to show you don't need thousands of dollars worth of calipers and thousands of dollars worth of equipment to dial in your cam or degree your cam. Some simple tools and a little bit of patience and you'll do just fine. If you're following along with the series and you'd like to get notifications when I upload a video, just click on the little bell next to the subscribe button. After you click on subscribe, click on that little bell and you'll get notifications every time I upload a video. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.